By 2018, the GE U30C and C30-7 era appeared to be in its final act on the Lake Superior and Ishpeming Railroad, with only a pair of each model still in service for the ore hauling line. As some of the first seasonal flurries flew in mid-October, we found the C30-7s at Eagle Mills Junction as they lead 120 empty iron ore jennies back to the Tilden Mine. At 40 years old, these Dash 7s are pretty old as far as locomotives go, but in fact they're among the youngest industrial things in this scene where they pass the Empire Mine, which first produced iron ore in the 1950s and pull vintage iron ore cars built in the 1930s and 40s predominantly. Built for the Burlington Northern Railroad in the late 1970s as the 5029 and 5031 respectively, the 7073 and 7074 are running testaments to those who designed, built, and maintained them over their 40-year history. Unfortunately, all that history doesn't mean the two old girls can pull quite like they used to. At Empire Junction, they begin a stiff 1.2% climb to Eagle Mills Junction with 61 now loaded iron ore cars. The snow has picked up and there are leaves on the tracks and the sanders are not working. Summing it all up, these guys will not be making it very far.
Dead in the water, only halfway up the hill, the crew worked with the Ellis and I control operator to formulate a rescue plan. The three-yard hill was at Eagle Mills, waiting for the Tilden job's arrival anyway, so they cut away from their train to come rescue the Tilden job. With the sun set and thick overcast skies above, the light was fading quickly by the time the rescuers approached. The curve here is the effective summit of the hill, which is short but these iron ore trains are heavy, approximately 6,000 tons. Without sand, they simply were not going to make it. After stop at Three Yard Hill, at the mission by the stop indication, Palmer Line, proceeding to the tilt If that is correct, operator open. The two crews quickly got the additional power tacked onto the front of the train for the pull up the hill. The two engineers kept separate control, coordinating their efforts once receiving permission to proceed from the operator at Eagle Mills. With nearly three horsepower per ton now on tap versus the one horsepower per ton earlier, it is an easy climb for the combined movement, even with the wet rail coated in leaf goo. Sometimes railroading isn't quite as simple as coupling up and notching out the throttle. It all happens in the weather no matter the conditions. And sometimes, the old workhorses fall to challenging environments. For now, the venerable GEs from the 1970s will continue to serve for the Ellis and I, but it's anybody's guess as to how long these hidden gems will continue to see action before their retirement. Thanks for watching this edition of the Thornapple River Rail Series. Don't forget to like and subscribe and leave any questions or comments below.